So, most of you know me. Uh, I am a data nerd. For those of you that don't know me, um, I spent many, many years, uh, over a decade, working in machine learning systems. Uh, Open Census has been around for about three years now. Uh, we now have 100 customers, paying customers, cash money. And <laughs> I, see, I, I see the IBM guys going, bless. <laughs> I know, revenues, real customers and, and problems and, and I have to deploy centers in lots of complex environments um, and that's not weekend kink, that's actually work open centers kind of how, uh, <laughs> that is, we, we have to go into construction projects, um, so we're really kind of have specialized into what we're good at which is commercial buildings, um, environmental monitoring, asset monitoring. Um, over the last year, we've been deploying probably uh, a sensor project every two weeks. Now we're kind of ramping up to deploying every week or so. So this collection of quite trolly slides is my learning, how I pretty much have done most of these mistakes, um, listen to some of them, ignore others. I'll be here next year saying I told you so. Um, but it is genuine kind of uh, fuck-ups most of us make. So if we get to it, so the, Cisco, the recent Cisco uh, research said 75% of IoT projects fail. It's even worse than that. They actually talked to quite, quite a few thousand companies and, and CIOs. Um, it's, this, this stat gets worse because only 15% um, felt that they got value out of their project. So 85% didn't get any value, right? But 75% were an utter failure. And that is, that is alarming, and, and hopefully this is kind of, um, this, is, this is me kind of saying that we, we need to do better. We need to do better as an industry, get past the hype, and, and actually start talking about real world implementation. This talk is useless for those that want to sell, uh, that have a really kind of negative outlook. I've heard people saying stuff like, I'm going to show, sell shovels in the gold rush, or, or you know, I want to get rich because IoT, billions of sensors. Yeah, no, this is, this is delivery. So, <coughs> mistake number one is that everyone talks about IoT as this one big thing. It's fine to have an IoT conference because we're kind of, it's like saying Web 2.0. But there is no such thing as an IoT company. Um, what I, I, I imagine I'm going to see in the next couple of years is we're going to have you know, the equivalent of um, wearables companies, uh, consumer kind of focused companies, smart home companies. Um, and and you know, there's nothing, there's no commonality between wearables and factories. Let's not even pretend there is. Let's, let's start talking about the distinct stacks that are necessary for each and the trade-offs and, and, and um, um, the, the, kind of the needs of each, uh, of each type. Um, the second one is everyone's becoming a tech magpie. And just because you talk about blockchain and big data doesn't mean that you have a, 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 a well, I don't even know what blockchain solves, but anyway. Um, so I say, you know, if you have IoT problems, I feel far bad for you. I have 99 problems. Big data is not one. Um, if you have tiny, tiny packets from 100 sensors being sent over the wire, over the LoRa wire, you do not need a Cassandra database. Jesus Christ, you might not even need a database. Stop it. Stop it. Okay, don't at me. You know it's true. I see you people. <laughs> you know, don't talk, let's not talk about this reference architecture. What do you need? And I have to laugh um, because I see this kind of really, really complex architecture. Um, and talking about app architecture, middleware is probably a tiny percentage of it. Um, saying that, oh yes, I have Kafka and I can do IoT is like saying, well, I have a Dynamo instance and I'm going to create an Amazon store. No, no. <laughs> this is a solved problem. If you, want, if you need Kafka, go for it, but spend 1% of your time, your energy on it, because you have much bigger problems than, than your middleware. Um, again, it's true. 
The other thing I see a lot of about is people go, we will deploy the cheaper centers, but we will deploy millions of them. And then I'm going to do data magic to solve that problem. Okay, your data science people are not alchemists. They cannot really do anything with the shit that you send them, okay? Um, you cannot, you know, like your event source system, your Kafka system is just going to be like a sewage system. If you have crappy data that's like random number generators, have less sensors, get better ones, spend money on that, and then, and then do some kind of simple aggregation and math to get some insight. Um, yeah, just, just have better sensors. We're, IoT is not a commodity, right? Like, no, sensor projects are not a commodity. Um, do it properly. Have one sensor, for God's sakes, rather than a thousand, but spend some money on it. Um, appreciate your hardware people. There's a lot of innovation that's still to be done um, in this space. And, and the, the fact that people kind of assume that the data side can be magicked up somehow is, is kind of completely false. Does anybody watch Halt and Catch Fire? Ah, oh, amazing. Okay. So Halt and Catch Fire is, is, is an amazing program. And, um, uh, you should watch it. The early days, the 80s, uh, kind of high time of when people were shipping PCs and, and uh, network computers. Um, anyway, so that's, that's a, these are the cats for it. But the point I'm trying to make is they, um, you, you need multidisciplinary teams. Um, when we're data people, we kind of think, oh yeah, I'll create an IoT project and fill it with data people because we're, we're the thing that matters. It's not true. You need hardware. Um, so our team consists of software, hardware people, kind of networking specialists, uh, QA people, project managers. You need this because you are shipping quite complex uh, products and, um, and and make sure that you tell the team that you know make the team understand that they need each other basically make them respect each other uh, don't have prima donnas of a certain thing um, and, and, and I'm starting to hear this kind of theme where people go hardware is going to be commoditized so we, we don't need that bit and you're like no no not really hardware is really really hard you know what's going to get commoditized? This is the true story. My nine-year-old does not know how to um, spell regression models, but she can download a free software um, from the internet, four lines, and she can run a regression model. So who's going to get commoditized? Data people. Right. Like, let's just not... <laughs> this is true, again. Anyway, this is your halfway ad break to say we are hiring. This is part of the team. We have 50-50 uh, gender balance. Two people out of the four uh, in the management team are, are black. Uh, we have every kind of, we, we're trying to build a, 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 a loving team. We care about each other. We also get our hands dirty. We care about our customers. We have customers all over Europe and the US. Um, I have a rule that somebody has to see a customer once a month. Um, and if you like dealing with people, I don't care if you're an engineer or sales, you need to love our customers. Um, come and talk to me. Um, we're, we're kind of, um, yeah. So, so, all right, back to your scheduled program. <laughs> Number six is, um, so the other mistake is people thinking, right, I'm gonna wire my stuff up and not thinking about logistics again. IoT, you cannot ignore the physicality of it, right? You have, you, we have supply chains, so we manage complex supply chains. We, I mean, for a company the size of ours, we have an inventory management system because we have to manage hardware, right? Uh, we have distribution networks. I have to go on the road and build distribution partners on the road. I have to figure out how to get sensors from the UK to other countries because we have customers all over the world. And this stuff takes up 40% of our time and money, and it should take up 40% of your time and money, at least, if not more. Um, we have to do site assessments, because these are complex environments, and you can't just chuck stuff at it. Um, so think about this and beware. Um, I think people kind of are, are used to deploying SaaS, and they kind of go, you know, lol. Um, the other thing that people <coughs> miss is, is the fact that provisioning is such a big deal. Right, if you don't know where your sensor is, if you don't have a plan for your ongoing maintenance, 
If I cannot, so we do a lot of buildings, um, uh, buildings deployments. Um, the facilities team in Spain, I call them up and I say, sensor X in the corner of this building, exactly where it is. Can you change the battery, please? Because the battery's low. You will have this problem. If you don't think about this before shipping, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Um, so provisioning is a thing. I'm not seeing enough people working on this problem. We have about 30 people or customers currently beta um, trying some stuff around provisioning. Maybe this time next year I can talk about it. But like, we're working on it. I think a lot of small companies are working on it. But it would be nice if, if collectively we start talking about the provisioning problem. Um, because it's actually really interesting how you tie, you know, kind of a, a thing as an asset to the physical world, maintain it, uh, not just the analytics, but actually the maintenance. Um, many people try to like run before they can walk, and and I I, I refuse to take on projects um, when people say I need fifty thousand sensors. What's the price? They're like, yeah, never mind. No, we, we don't work that way. Um, at every stage of the process, you have to do it. You start, I know it's not glamorous, and I know you don't get the big box, but start with a few in a lab. Get it working, assess it, really kind of truly understand um, the value, right? The end goal. Does it meet the end goal? If it doesn't, know there, scrap it, kind of redo it again. Then get 50 sensors in the wild, and then 500 and build up. No one can tell you how much it's going to cost, what the complexity is going to be, unless you do these things. Um, Anyone that knows what they're doing will do it anyway. Um, we don't learn enough from computing history. So we kind of are like, oh, IoT is the magical thing. But you know, in the 80s and 90s, we shipped networked hardware and software. And, and a lot of people wrote it about us. So this is, this is who, who had like, who is a Microsoft certified administrator? I, I was in the 90s, yes. Right, was, you know, that kind of concept is going to come in handy because we are just, you know, it's network, tiny little computers that talk, that have a local area network, talk to a network server, out to the internet. Really, that's it. I mean, um, one day maybe Andy will invite me to IBM's libraries because I, I think there's so much knowledge there. But this is this is what we're doing, right? Like, so let's learn from the past because people have figured out a lot of the problems. And um, let's not reinvent the wheel. <laughs> so my last point on that is, is um, so I don't, I, don't, I don't kind of do this stuff. I mean, uh, I could get, make more money and, and, and have a glamorous life if I did something else. I don't, I, don't, I don't do this because I want to sell billions of sensors. I, I do this because, you know, for, for what we do, we're managing data from in physical infrastructure, and we think a lot about how do we manage it efficiently. We think a lot about how we um, deploy sensors in um, kind of uh, water plants and so forth. And it's really, you know, this IoT, the opportunity is for us all as human beings to be able to use our physical infrastructure much more efficiently. Um, as you have, you know, <coughs> another two or three billion people in the next kind of in the next 20 to 30 years, we have to use our physical infrastructure really well. And for me, this is the opportunity, right? Um, our customers, one of our customers has 100 buildings. They figured out from the data that they can use kind of 40% less, right? That's 40% less buildings that have to be built and other people can use. That's 40% less energy that can be used. Um, let's not forget how transformational this is and, and really concentrate on that and, and I think Sometimes, well, I kind of feel like the narrative has to be taken back by the doors by people in this room, um, rather than the kind of Gartner bullshit of, of billions of sensors. Like, nobody cares. Like, it's so much effort. So, like, really, you're not going to get rich out of it. So, might as well just hold on to this big dream and 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 let's do something transformational. And um, anyone that wants to use the learnings in order to do that, you know, I will support you in any way I can. Um, Okay, I'll flog that horse. So, <laughs> um, uh, so in conclusion, so let's stop pretending that IoT is the same thing. Let's start talking about the nuances between the different industries, and and building for, for, for different industries. I would I would actually kind of 
argue with some of you that there is no such thing as an IoT platform. There is going to be an e-commerce, a CRM, or whatever equivalents, and we're going to see this. And that's healthy, and that's a good thing. Um, and then when it's called something else, I'll just follow that and, and not be in the same industry as bloody Juicero and, and all these people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be associated with that crowd. Like, that is not. So, um, and let's focus on, on meeting your customer needs and rather than kind of the headlines and, and, and take back this industry and, and make it what it could be. Um, and I'm really excited to be on this journey. And thank you. I think that's it.